88 production and special vehicle crews from Botswana, Lesotho and all over South Africa entered for the Nissan Sugarbelt 400, organised by the Natal Off-Road Motor Club and rated as the best organised event. On Saturday morning, the cold front had moved in, but there was no sign of rain, which meant that the 77 crews that survived the prologue would be faced with very dusty conditions, making it difficult to overtake. As always, there were last-minute preparations and repairs. Fond farewells, nervous energy, and some interesting spectators. Dick Hasbrook was still toiling away an hour before the start. Yeah, here is the other one on problem as he as he cough. So he's first stop Excel the boat is off for And uh Dakar rider Alfie Cox was on home ground, but this time on four wheels. The difference between a bike is um, you've only got a little two inch or three inch wheel on the ground. And what we do in the bikes is obviously we choose the better line. I mean, if we're braking on grass and there's a bit of dirt next to the grass, we go into the dirt if it's slippery. So definitely it's not the same driving in four wheels. You know, you've got everything is sticking out everywhere and uh, yeah the grass every time we came to the sugar belt obviously the winter mornings the grass is always slippery and it was a big problem on a motorcycle and i'm sure it's going to be the same with a car cliff barker rates the nissan sugar belt 400 as his favorite look the sugar belt's always been very good well organized um, very good terrain tight hard hard on the driver hard on the car and it's one of the better races in, in south africa so obviously i wasn't in retirement i was just resting <laughs> And yeah, I'm back, and I'm sure I'll do three more races this year. My car's got the independent rear suspension. Uh, it's the same suspension that I ran in the Dakar. Um, I think it, 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 it has probably got a bit of an advantage uh, over the, this terrain, uh, especially when it's very tight. Um, it's got a bit, so the traction's a little bit better than on the, the actual car. Um, but we're still uh, sorting the vehicle out. Um, I'm, we're still struggling with a bit of oversteer on high-speed corners, which uh, doesn't give you that much confidence. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's got advantages in some sections, but still disadvantages in others. But um, I think generally it went very, very well yesterday, and... Uh, Hopefully we can continue like that. Daniel's car is basically the Dakar vehicle. It's an Evo vehicle that they're busy developing uh, for the Dakar. And uh, they've got an independent rear suspension in it. And uh, I think it showed yesterday on the rough stuff uh, and the traction that it gets. Uh, it's very, very good. I think we're just going to sit behind Gerard. Um It's pretty misty out there. It's very, very slippery, especially in the, in the wet in the mornings. We're just going to sit behind Gerard and uh, let's see how he goes because he's generally fairly reliable and uh, he's also pretty quick. So let's see what happens from behind. I get that some of them reaching out for him on the international. So I was very, very bang on the rest of them, but it was very like it's good off the way. Crews were required to complete three laps of the 130-kilometer Blue Route, which included sugarcane service roads, tight forestry sections, and wide open high-speed stages. A large crowd braved the crisp, misty conditions to witness the start of the Nissan Sugarbelt 400. Williams and Jordan were first away in the proudly South African Nissan hardbody and had the advantage of no dust, but the disadvantage of having to sweep or clear the roads of debris or loose gravel. Krobler and Leek were next away in the proudly South African Nissan hardbody. Being a seeded start meant that the results would be calculated on corrected time, whereby the one minute dust gap between competitors would be factored out of the final results and the position held by a competitor on the road would not necessarily be the position in which he or she would be classified in the final results. Sounds complicated, but simply put, if Krobler gained one second on the Villiers, he would be the new race leader by one second on paper, but still occupy second place on the road. The veteran pair was intent on adding to their rich haul of four consecutive victories and adding another win to Nissan's tally of eight consecutive victories since last year's Nissan Sugarbelt 400. 
Woolridge and Scotthammer were seated third, and in a confident mood, but only time and 390 kilometers of tough racing would tell whether the sweet-sounding V6-powered Team Ford Racing Ranger was a match for the all-conquering Nissans. Sit back and enjoy the ride. The talented pair had the distinction of being the first South Africans to finish in the car category in the Dakar Rally when they finished third in the T1 class in 1999. Clerk of the course, Rex Borum. Brothers Gerard and Lawrence Duplessis won four events overall in 2002 in the Liebherr Gymco, and with Gerard behind the wheel this time out, the chasing pack would have their work cut out trying to get past him and wife Quirby. Weir Smith injured a finger on Friday, which required medical attention, but it was unlikely to hamper the hard-charging businessman whose aggressive and rapid driving style in the BMW 540v8 powered at Hagen's Copenhagen Hotel Jimco is always entertaining. Atang Mahachanene and Mike Stangel Sam Racing Jimco is always immaculately prepared and their season opening win in the Western Cape gave them the psychological advantage over their rivals, but there were problems. Their race was destined to be short-lived. Fossen Griffith retired from the Nissan Dealer 400 and had some catching up to do if they hoped to defend their production vehicle championship title. The rollover in the prologue hadn't damaged the proudly South African Nissan hardbody too much and the pair was immediately on the pace. Nashua Mobile Racing switched to Mitsubishi engines this year with Darson Rutherford running a 3.5-litre twin-turbo V6 engine in the Chenoweth. They had a Class A newcomer, Gerald Mundell and Billy Bond, in the prolonged bat hard on their heels. Mundell moved up from Class B and surprised everyone when he set the fastest special vehicle time in the prologue on the Nissan dealer 400 recently. Barker and Camper were next away in the BMW M3-powered Barker Performance Products Land Rover, now in its fifth season of competition. Barker recently started mountain biking and is a regular competitor in mountain bike events. Gavin Morton in the Santon Off-Road Accessories Race Co. were one of the leading contenders in Class S for special vehicles fitted with trailing arm front suspensions, and they were followed a minute later by Scott Abraham and Richard Carolyn in the Atlas Copco Chicago Pneumatic Jeep, which runs in two-wheel drive in the four-wheel drive dominated Class T. Abraham and Carolyn shared driving duties in the 5.9-litre V8-powered Jeep, and this time around Carolyn elected to start the race. Terence Marsh and Graham Thornton opted for the 3.5-litre supercharged Mitsubishi V6 engine for the Nashua Mobile Racing Jimco. Pete Hasbrook and Freddie Skippers from Tosca failed to finish the Nissan Dealer 400 and were hoping to fare better this time out in the Castrol Toyota Land Cruiser. Hasbrook has always been a strong contender in Class D, but has been plagued by front suspension and drivetrain problems on the Toyota. Juan van der Merve and 16-year-old son Martinez won Class D in the Western Cape in the Chivani Mitsubishi Colt. Martinez is the youngest co-driver in the field. At the start point, the car couldn't even drive beyond 3,000 RPM and the engine just cut out from there and we drove 200 meters we had to stop which we've been trying for two hours to correct fix the problem we couldn't and uh, unfortunately we're out of the race the good thing is that whoever wins this race we're at par with and uh, championship points we'll fight to be head above him in the next race that's all we can say Class E for near-standard, normally aspirated or diesel-powered four-cylinder buckies has come of age, with some competitors producing giant-killing performances.